Chapter 5, Karma Yoga, Action in Krishna Consciousness. Arjuna said, O oh Krishna, first of all, you ask me to renounce work, and then again, you re recommend work with devotion. Now, will you kindly tell me definitively which of the two is more beneficial? The Personality of Godhead replied, The renunciation of work and work and devotion are both good for liberation, but of the two, work and devotional service is better than renunciation of work. One who is neither, one who neither hates nor desires the fruits of his activities is known to be always renounced. Such a person, free from all dualities, easily overcomes material bondage and is completely liberated, O oh, mighty armed Arjuna. Only the ignorant speak of the devotional service as being different from the analytical study of the material world. But those who are actually learned say that he who applies himself well to one of these paths achieves the results of both. One who knows that the position reached by means of analytical study can also be attained by devotional service, and who therefore sees analytical study and devotional service to be on the same level, sees things as they are. Merely renouncing all activities, yet not engaging in the devotional service of the Lord cannot make one happy, but a thoughtful person engaged in devotional service can achieve achieve the supreme without delay one who works in devotion who is a pure soul and who controls his mind and senses is dear to everyone and everyone is dear to him though always working such a man is never entangled a person in the divine consciousness although engaged in seeing hearing, touching, smelling, eating, moving about, sleeping, and breathing, always knows within himself that he actually does nothing at all. Because while speaking, evacuating, receiving, or opening, or closing his eyes, he always knows that, the only, that only the material senses are engaged with their objects, and that he is aloof from them. One who performs his duty without attachment, surrendering the results unto the Supreme Lord, is unaffected by sinful action, as the lotus leaf is untouched by water. The yogis, abandoning attachment, act with body, mind, intelligence, and even with the senses, only for the purpose of purification. The steadily devoted soul a steadily devoted soul attains unadulterated peace because he offers the result of all activities to me. Whereas a person who is not in union with the divine, who is greedy for the fruits of his labor, becomes entangled. When the embodied living being controls his nature and mentally renounces all actions, he resides happily in the city of nine gates neither working nor causing work to be done. The embodied spirit, master of the city of his body, does not create activity, nor does he induce people to act, nor does he create the fruits of action. All this is enacted by the modes of material nature. Nor does the Supreme Lord assume anyone's sinful or pious activities. Embodied beings, however, are bewildered because of the ignorance which covers their real knowledge. When, however, one is enlightened with the knowledge by which ni science is destroyed, then his knowledge reveals everything as the sun lights up everything in the daytime. When one's intelligence, mind, faith, and refuge are all fixed in the supreme, then one becomes fully cleansed of misgivings through complete knowledge and thus proceeds straight on the path of liberation.
the humble sages by virtue and true knowledge see with equal vision a learned and gentle brahmana a cow an elephant a dog and a dog eater those whose mind are established in the sameness and equanimity have already conquered the conditions of birth and death they are flawless like brahman and thus they are already situated in Brahman. A person who neither rejoices upon achieving something pleasant nor laments upon obtaining something unpleasant, who is self-intelligent, who is unbewildered, and who knows the science of God is already situated in transcendence. Such a liberated person is not attracted to material sense pleasure, but is always in trance, enjoying the pleasures within in this way, the self-realized person enjoys unlimited happiness, for he can concentrates on the Supreme. An, intelligence person, an intelligent person does not take part in the sources of misery, which are due to contact with the material senses. O son of Kunti, such pleasures have a beginning and an end, and so the wise man does not delight in them. Before giving up this present body, if one is able to tolerate the urges of the material senses and check the force of desire and anger, he is well situated and is happy in this world. One whose happiness is within, who is active and rejoices within, and whose aim is inward, is actually the perfect mystic. He is liberated in supreme uh, he is liberated in the supreme and ultimately he attains the supreme those who are beyond the dualities that arise from doubts whose minds are engaged within who are always busy working for the welfare of all living beings and who are free from all sins achieve liberation in the supreme those who are free from anger and all material desires, who are self-realized, self-disciplined, and constantly endeavoring for perfection, are assured of liberation in the Supreme in the very near future. Shutting out all external sense objects, keeping the eyes and vision concentrated between the two eyebrows, suspending the inward and outward breath within the nostrils and thus controlling the mind senses and intelligence the transcendentalist aiming at liberation becomes free from desire fear and anger one who is always in this state is certainly liberated a person in full consciousness of me knowing me to be the ultimate beneficiary of all sacrifices and austerities, the Supreme Lord of all planets and demigods, and the benefactor and well-wisher of all living entities, attains peace from the pangs of material miseries. <laughs>